So welcome to Fourth Jeopardy. This is going to be fun. This is going to be interesting. As a as an introductory note, I was a little worried about some of these these questions expand a 42 year range of the of fourth in the uh, uh, hobbyist home community uh, community since the founding of the Fourth Interest Group, and I was a little worried that some of the questions would be quite obscure. But I do see we have quite a number of the old timers here. So uh, they will be our anchor on uh, getting some of these more obscure questions. So the rules today, we're doing a slight variation in the normal Jeopardy process. Uh, you will be presented with a question and then you're to, uh, you're, you're, you will be um, given an answer and then you are to form your, your response in the form of a question. Now, upon a correct response, since the moderator knows what the answers are, then the uh, corresponding question will be shown for confirmation. Otherwise, um, after the first um, contestant uh, uh, acts, if the answer is wrong, anyone can respond. In other words, I want to hear shout outs until somebody comes along with the right answer and then we will proceed. Um, there's not much point in going directly to the answer. Uh, it's more fun to see what people know. So I hope that's clear. We're going to have one person start. Uh, if that person misses, then shout out your answer and whoever answers gets to take the next question. Um, when you have the um, Jeopardy control, uh, you can so you can select, as we see here, a uh, topic and a dollar value. So our topics for today is FIG, People 1, CHM, Standards, WFR, and People 2. So do I have someone who would like to be our first uh, contestant? I see I've won the coin toss. So Bill, I'd like FIG for $100. Okay, Kevin, it's yours. The uh, question is, who started FIG? Very good, correct answer. Who founded the fourth interest group? Since you won that round, your next question. I would like uh, FIG for $200, please. After 42 years of monthly meetings, they're still going strong. That would be the uh, Silicon Valley fourth interest group. Correct. We don't have the sound effects to give you the perfect sound response. Perfect. Fourth interest group and its successor, Silicon Valley fourth. Continue. I was hoping that you'd play, instead of the Jeopardy theme, that you'd play the Weird Al uh, song, <laughs> uh, I Lost at Jeopardy. Uh, I will... Uh, I will say uh, fig for $300, Bill, and then I'll yield to, uh, to uh, random access for blathering out answers. Okay. I'm going to give you a shout out and you will make the next response. Don't be shy. So one person jump in. <laughs> uh, Let's, let's give it to Dave and he uh, notes that you need to have it in the form of a question. Okay, the proper name of- Wait, wait hold, um, I pass. So uh, I'm gonna give it to uh, Dennis Roofer. The proper name of formal, Dennis. Um, fourth Modification Laboratory. Hooray, he's got it. Another, we have another winner. Okay, you pick the next topic and dollar amount. Oh, pick for 400. The butterfly site of formal conferences. Ah. Uh, Silomar Conference Center. In, in the form of a question. Oh, uh, what is the Silomar Conference Center? <laughs> Perfect, absolutely great. All right, uh, your next topic and question. Pick for 500, let's finish it. Managed fig from Mountain View. Yes, I, I, I 
worked with them. Um, I forget the name. <laughs> well, it's not I forget the name. Earwax Associates. Say again? I said Earwax Associates because I'm easily amused. No, oh, okay. All right, do we have another volunteer jump in? Kevin. Managed Pig from Mountain View. Was that what is Kevin? Who is Kevin? No. <laughs> This is obscure. That's why five hundred dollars. Any old timers? What was the name of the man who managed Fig from Mountain View? He was the first paid manager. At this point in time, Fig had three thousand members, forty chapters, and we had two hundred thousand dollars in the bank, so we had a paid manager. Go ahead. Marvin? Again? Who is Marvin? Marvin. Uh, uh, who is Roy Martins? Oh, Ray. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So you get to pick the next topic and dollar. Uh, people for 100. People for 100. Harris, James, Bolton, Ragsdale, and Kelbridge. As a question. Who never trusted a computer that they couldn't lift? <laughs> the Bolton slogan. Oops. Who 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 created the first uh, uh, fig? Uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, the fig model. Model. Yeah. Uh, it's close, but not correct. Uh, think yeah. earlier than that. So kind of the right people, but think a little earlier. What did they do? Does this have to do with the fig assembly listings or is this just started fig? No, it's, uh, you've, you've talked that. about it. Who founded the Fork Interest Group? These are the five founders. Uh, that was also a question in fig. It, it's, the Mount Rushmore, question. it's the Mount Rushmore of the Fork Interest Group. Okay, Dwight, uh, carry on. Um, oh, I, I missed that one. <laughs> okay, we get, did I get, there's not a hundred. Whoops, whoops, we, <laughs> sorry. we, just, we just, gave, just gave away people for 100, for one. Um, we'll, re, we'll do that one again, just so people know. For people for 100, oh, there it is. It, no, that works. Okay. So uh, volunteer for the next question or shout out, shout out. People for $200, Bill. Okay, people for $200. Creators of the major F83 version. Laxon and Harris. Close. Um, Laxon and Perry. Perfect. You've got it. There we go. Laxon and Perry. Okay. Pick the next one. People for $300, Bill. People for $300. He started, then began thinking. Leo Brody. Yeah, uh, Dwight, uh, you pick the next one. Why? Why me? <laughs> okay, four hundred people. I'm not good with people. Synthesized Ooh. Eworth and Zen. Who is Dr. King? Hey, Don Golding got it. Hey, Dr. King. So, Don Golding, you get the next question. Uh, people won for 500. People for 500. The duo creating win 32 fourth. Andrew McEwen and Tom Zimmer. Sure. Who are Good. Andrew McEwen and Tom Zimmer? Good. Andrew McEwen and Tom Zimmer. Andrew started in about 95 and Zimmer picked it up about the next several years. Okay, pick the next uh, one, topic and dollar. Does uh, CHM stand for? What do you think? It's a, it's a top right-hand corner of all the screens from the old days. Oh, uh, Chuck, uh, Chuck Moore stuff? I don't well, know. you work it out. And so uh, pick, a, uh, pick a column and pick a question. <laughs> okay, about standards. Standards for 100. 
Very good. The fourth astronomical group who was in Utrecht in 1977. The year is the clue. <laughs> With that clue, I would say uh, 1977 standard. I don't know. <laughs> what is Ring the bell? What is the home of 477? Uh, mm -hmm. It was a brief standard uh, done from um, in the astronomical community based on uh, Chuck's work from Kitt Peak. Okay, Dwight, next. You're killing me here. <laughs> 200, we'll go for 200. For standards? Yeah. The fourth convocation on Catalina in 1979. What was 479? Bingo, 479. <laughs> Next. Uh, I'll defer to somebody else. Okay, pass on to someone else. Come, on, come ahead. Uh, I'll take standards for 300. <laughs> Good. Thank you, Brad. Standards for 300. A stepping stone to standards before ANS 4th. Oh, boy. Is this, is this like that working draft that... Uh, uh, Fourth eighty three. I'm golden got it. What, uh -huh. what is fourth eighty three? That's quite a gap in between the two for a stepping stone. <laughs> that was a, the marathon. Okay, uh, Don, your turn. Pick it. Uh, standards for four hundred. Standards for four hundred. Your fourth today better follow it. The ANS standard. Very good. NZ, yeah, NZ fourth. Well, American National Standard, NC fourth. Okay, Don, keep going. Uh, standards for 500. The fourth 2000X committee. 2010. What is the fourth 2010 committee? No, no, we're, we're trying to find the environment. It's the committee. What is the fourth 2000X committee? That one's a little obscure, um, inferential, and that's why it's the $500 question. Uh, this is the current European-based four standards group. Uh, they are working on their annual meetings uh, taking the ANS fourth and uh, continuing evolution. Okay, someone new. How about someone new pick remaining uh, topic and dollar value? You people are too shy. You got to jump in and shout. Okay, I take CHM for $100. And that was CHM for 100. Thank you. Yep. His first fourth was at Mohasco. Well, Chuck Moore. Very good, cool. sir. <laughs> Very good answer. Yeah, the question uh, who is Chuck Moore? Yeah. yeah. The um, Mahasco is a carpet mill, and uh, Chuck did his early work there on the um, computer at Mahasco. Next one. Go ahead. Okay, so for $200. He wanted the name to be fourth. The, the operating system would only allow five characters. Who is, who is the inventor or the inventor of fourth? And the operating system could only take five characters. They drop the U. And the response is? Who is Charles Moore? Very good answer. <laughs> oh. Good. Mine was too long. <laughs> OK, next, uh, next responder, come now. Uh, hold just hold just a tiny second, okay? Why does the Dr. Ting pick one? Dr. Ting. Okay, Amazon just came and told me I had a present. Okay, um, another another uh, responder, come in now, please. Just jump in. I'll try C H M for three hundred. Okay, hey, Joe, wonderful. MIT's most famous language creator. 
was Charles Fort. Very good answer. Yeah, Charles. <laughs> Charles Fort, uh, yeah. Charles very good answer. That was very inspirational. So it's not one of those C doofuses? <laughs> A CHM for 400. CHM for 400. His variant 620 I fourth traveled the world. Who is Charles Moore? Good answer, Joe. It's very good. <laughs> I don't know. I keep expecting a trick question. <laughs> you're giving us too much credit. Okay, Joe, your next, uh, your next selection. Okay. I'll f finish this off. CHM for 500. His, his patented multi-core technology resides in every Intel and AMD processor. Who is Charles Moore? And you brought us right back with a home run. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm actually curious, which invention would that be? Like, which which one of his inventions would that be? I'm, I'm which one yeah. would be? Yes, yes. I, I was just curious about, uh, yeah. I believe it's the clockless uh, logic that he patented. It, part of the uh, Patriot portfolio. I, don't, I forget what they called it. Yeah, essentially, it is the uh, multi-core processor on a single chip. It was designated in the uh, early 2000s as one of the top 20 va most valuable um, patents in uh, Silicon Valley technology. But I, don't I believe, believe there's two. The second claim was he, he had a low, he had, he and he multiplied the uh, the clock frequency internally with a P PLL. I think that was the second one. Oh, yeah, I mean, Lecron believed it stuck and good at the PLL. And they were going after anybody that had a PLL. Ah, uh, yes. All right, uh, do we have another volunteer for the remaining couple of questions? I'll send WFR for 100. Okay, Pat, thank you. Uh, uh, what was the uh, selection again, please? WFR. For how many dollars? For $100. Very good. The founding president of the Fourth Interest Group. Who is uh, Bill Ragsdale? Good answer. Next question. I'll try for 200 as well. Okay, WFR for 200. He is the author of Fig Fourth. Uh, who is W.F. Ragsdale? Very good. You see a bit of a pattern here. I do, indeed. Somebody else give it a try. I'll try 300. Okay, Dwight's for 300. He was the recipient of the first Figgy Award. Bill Ragsdale. <laughs> who was Bill Ragsdale? That worked. <laughs> Okay, Dwight, one more. Okay, we'll do 400. <laughs> WFR for 400. He was the first chairman of the 479 standards team. Yeah, that the was. The guy who, who didn't piss anybody off. <laughs> <laughs> who, was, who was Bill Wrightsdale? <laughs> okay, right. I'll, I'll, I'll defer to. That's, that's a very one good. One more. <laughs> I'll take the $500. Okay. <laughs> And finally, uh, WFR for 500, created only and also. That would be William Bill Ragsdale. Ragsdale. <laughs> Very good answer. You, you, you guys are quick studies. Very I'd good. like people, too, for $100. Okay. The father of the Novix 4000 processor. That would be Chuck Charles Moore. Moore. A, a question format, please. Who is Charles Moore? Perfect. Next. People for 200. Okay, the second fourth programmer. Hello. Elizabeth Rather, who is Elizabeth Rather? Perfect, good answer. $300. Okay, use before Chuck invented, create does. Bill does, what, what is, is Bill does? You got it, Bill. What is Bill does? Perfect, yeah. got it, perfect. <laughs>
Okay, next question. Somebody jump in. Four hundred dollars. Table hold two for four hundred dollars. The creator of Apple's Easy Rider using Fig Four. Who is Crunch. Captain Crunch? Good. Who is John Draper? Although he was used to be irritated by being called Captain Crunch, and now he kind of he's fond of it. And finally, table two for five hundred. Table two for five hundred dollars. The duo creating the Fork Institute at the University of Rochester. Anybody? I see you saved the Brand tricky one for the last. <laughs> Say again, who was the creator of uh, the Fork Institute? Who is Fork Mo Lee Howard Lee. and Larry Forsley? Close. Tia Martin, Tia Martin, and Larry Forsley. Very good, folks. We ran the board. Sorry. Yeah, that was fun. Sorry, we don't have double jeopardy this time, or do we don't have sound effects. But uh, I also have to thank the Boy Scouts of America because um, I got this Jeopardy program 15 years ago at a Boy Scout event, and uh, I took off all the questions about knots and ropes and put in questions about fourth. So uh, back to Kevin. Thank you for your participation. I have to find the unmute button now. <laughs> All right. So what I'd like to do is uh, go down the participants list and uh, ask you each to uh, say uh, where you're from. If you have a uh, thing that you'd like to say about fourth, like uh, I use fourth for X, Y, or Z, or my favorite fourth environment is uh, alpha, beta, gamma, or something like that. So who you are, where you're from, and uh, say something about fourth. Uh, I, I used to say at these meetings, I'm Kevin Appert, I'm the program chairman, and uh, uh, the LSI 11 is the last computer I'll ever really understand. So, uh, Bill Ragsdale, you're up. He's not responding. Carl Hansen, where are you from? And say something about fourth. Hello, I can't hear anybody say anything. Somebody say something. It's me, Dwight. Peter's here. We're here. I hear Dwight. Hi. Okay, Dwight, where are you from? And uh, say something about where fourth. I'm I'm from. Uh, I was born in San Jose, and uh, uh, I've been tinkering with fourth for a long time. And I thought I would show. I don't know if if uh, it, it may not come up. Uh, somebody else has got the screen, but. Uh, if those can see me, let's see if I can show this. This is my CM fourth machine. Notice I called it the single board computer because it's not <laughs> on a single board of plywood. There's a power, <laughs> supply, cool. at the, power supply at the bottom. I've got uh, a hard disk and a, and a floppy. I used to have two floppies, but I borrowed that for another project. And uh, in here I have, uh, uh, there's, there's four boards in it. Uh, one of at the end, I don't know if it's clear. The one at the end is a is a uh, floppy controller. The next one over is an MFM controller, and then there's a uh, there's a uh, you can see the parts on it a little bit. There's a a card that uh, uh, has has various system functions like, like address and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, let me get it off here. This is the this is, of course, the actual CM4000 uh, processor. And uh, uh, it has some modifications on it. If you look over here, you can see, oops, get it right so you can see it. There's some uh, wiring and a, and a dead bug mounted chip. That allows me to uh, uh, load, load from ROM into RAM and then switch over so I'm purely running out of RAM. That allows me to more easily experiment with the uh, 
with the CM4 so I can go in there and actually just modify things as I like. Somewhat similar to a deferred word, but more just patchy. So anyhow, that's it. I thought I'd show that. Thank you, Dwight. Uh... Thank you, Dwight. Uh, Ting? Okay, Ting. Um, my first uh, uh, fourth, I learned fourth from the top. My fourth, the uh, first uh, fourth system uh, was polyfourth on LSI 11. That, that's uh, probably the best fourth. Okay, thank you. All right, Carl Hansen. Okay, Carl, uh, is it D-I-L-F-I? -I? Uh, D-J-L-F-I. Oh, it's D-J, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Oh, gee, I did fourth. Uh, I had uh, my first fourth was on my first Commodore 64, which was serial number 576. And I've been diddling with it ever since. Okay, Daniel. Oh, my name is Daniel Kalni. I'm from the Czech Republic. And uh, my first fourth was actually FIG fourth on, on ZX Spectrum. And for the last uh, like six years, I, I use fourth to program green arrays chips. And after those six years, I still have things to learn about those chips. So that that's what I do mostly with us. Okay, Adrian. Okay, uh, no Adrian. I'm, I'm Adrian. I'm in Estonia at the moment, but my home is back in Australia. It's just too difficult to get back there under the current situation. Um, and I've just loaded um, C4 onto this device. It's actually a um, capacitive uh, soil moisture detector and now to try and make it do something useful. So that's what I'll do for the next days or weeks. <laughs> it looks like fourth has both ends of that with the uh, fourth incorporated uh, code in the middle of the Lego uh, irrigation controller. Uh, so, uh, Bob Armstrong. Hi, um, I uh, first learned of fourth um, when I was in Rochester doing APL um, at Xerox, but um, I last uh, worked with hardware on a, uh, on a PDP-8. And um, so in a sense, I'm, I'm coming in from the other end of the spectrum and um, see forth as being the only, the, the minimal path to get off of, from a chip to um, an array from from arrays on silicon to array to 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 phys to uh, conceptual arrays. That's it. Okay, Brad Nelson. Brad, hello, Brad. Hello, um, I'm Brad Nelson. Um, I uh, my first exposure to, to fourth. Uh, Probably was in books and whatnot, but I, I, I think my first hands-on fourth was uh, Pygmy fourth, uh, oddly enough. Um, the, uh, uh, I guess in the interest of sharing a thing, you know, uh, one of the things I've enjoyed with fourth is how much you can do with so little code. And here's, uh, please check out uh, fourth IQ and, uh, you know, a tiny little program like this turns into something beautiful like that. So. Woohoo. All right, Peter Forth. Hello, can you hear me, De uh, Kevin? I can hear you. Okay. Um, well, I, I was born in Argentina, and uh, actually, actually, I live in Brazil. And uh, Forth was e extraordinary for my life. I use it professionally. Today, 
I use it for hobby. This is a ESP8266. I automatized, I did a home automation with this. It was very nice. But uh, I used a force from 1982 to 85, uh, 95, uh, professionally LMY force from, from Ray. And uh, today we have a group, a force group. It's very nice, a lot of friends. And uh, I enjoy it very much. Okay, Cecil Bayona. Hi, how are you doing? I'm in Arkansas, USA. Uh, I've been involved with force on and off for a long time, and uh, starting in the middle 70s. And I built several force systems, but none of them have been conventional at all. Uh, my first force, for example, was a target compiler written in a microprocessor. And uh, you could you would type in fourth and out would spit out assembly language code for whatever processor I was interested in at the time. So I on and off I keep going back to fourth. I like the simplicity. Uh, my latest project I'm working on is a um, Motorola 68030 board uh, running CPM 68K. And uh, yeah, retro, and uh, it's running F83 fourth, which I've never used in my life. And uh, mostly I use uh, my own, and then later on, uh, Pygmy fourth, which is a uh, offshoot of CM fourth, and I loved it. Uh, but uh, I guess I missed out a lot because it seems like a pretty good system. That's it. All right, uh, Charles Curley. Hello, Charles Curley. Charles Curley. Charles Curley. Yeah. Um, I'm in NYI. Started with full typing in the listing. On an IFIC and uh, there. And if I fixed a couple of way, the adopted and got the uh, Ohio and I vote. I've done on since then uh, right on target computer watching uh, what John at uh, their target computer at well for a long and kind of had on some of the little shepherd the aim 64th on the aim 64th by the time i got there uh and light and uh we did light boards uh in and for filer thousand and with brad rodriguez is still Somebody mentioned paying bets and much what I mean lately. Actually, Atari S running your old machine works. So, Matt, thank you. Okay, uh, Eric. Eric Olson, since you're on the screen in front okay. of me. Um, sorry, I had to work all morning, but um, I guess this oh, is just welcome. The introductions. Yeah, yeah. say uh, who you are, where you're at, yeah. and uh, say something about fourth, like the first fourth <laughs> you used, or what you think about yeah. fourth, yeah. or uh, why do they have all those special uh, parking places uh, yeah, for got it. programmers. Right. Go. So um, I'm Eric Olson. I currently live in Austin, Texas. Uh, my first high level language after basic was TI Force. Uh, it was through the, the free distribution that Texas Instruments made for their TI-99 home computer. So that's uh, stuck with me a long time. Um, I've dabbled in it for my own projects lately. 
And currently I'm building a, a retro computer with that uses fourth as the BIOS. And here's a CPU card uh, that is working. I've been testing this out. And it's uh, designed around a Euro card bus that I borrow from the retro computing or native M uh, club, which has been going on for a long time. And uh, that's going to be really exciting when I get it running. Uh, the BIOS is going to hold Camel Force, um, which has been ported by Brian Fox. Um, and it's also just going to have at least two or three, four other flavors of Force on it, um, including the, the FPGA um, for my debugging purposes. It's got um, the J1A on it that I already use as a debug console. And that's my exciting project right now. It's uh, really, I'm really loving it. Okay, that's great. I, I think I see two instances of uh, Ken B. There's Ken B and Ken Boak. Uh, are you in fact uh, separate people or are there just two instances of you? Hi, Kevin. I'm one and the same. Um, okay, um, I live 20 miles south of London. Um, I heard about Forth around about uh, 1981 when I was at high school. Um, I started out with a ZX81 that you guys would call a, a Timex uh, T1000, Z80 machine. Um, I stuck with Z80s for most of my teenage years and I built this Z80 board. This board, I laid it out with red and blue tape. Um, it's about 35 years old. Um, and more recently, this is my tiny fourth system. Um, it's a MSP430, um, about four millimeter square chip um, with a, uh, uh, um, a feral electric memory on the back and a USB communication system. And that runs uh, a version of uh, me Chris Forth. So, as a hardware engineer, I've been using Forth on and off since uh, since I was about fourteen. So, forty odd years. Great. I recommend to you uh, last year's was it last year's presentation and uh, previous presentations uh, on Fourth Days Past, uh, all available on the uh, YouTube channel, the SV Fig YouTube channel. Okay, Dave Babcock. Hello, Dave. CQ, CQ, CQDX. Let me uh, unmute everything. Hi, um, I'm Dave Babcock, a retired software engineer uh, currently living in Southern California. Um, my first experience with Forth was about 50 years ago. I worked at uh, University Computer Center and the university was given uh, an astronomical observatory and everything was run by Forth. No one knew it. So I was tasked to learn Forth and go help out. Um, I've dabbled with Forth uh, from a hobby standpoint off and on for the last few years or for the 50 years. But the last few years I've been interested in doing a Forth uh, implementation for the IBM 1620 computer. Um, I led the Computer History Museum's restoration project, first one they ever did, and it was this IBM 1620. And the last four years, I've been leaving, I don't know if you can see it, um, the IBM 1620 Junior Project at the Computer History Museum to build a replica of uh, 1620. The interesting thing about the 1620 is its limited character set. Uh, it's all uppercase, just a few special characters, and in fact, not the characters you need for doing four. So I've had some discussions with the big group a couple years ago about possible solutions, but I plan to do some um, enhancements to the 1620 to add more characters and, and some more memory and stuff so that I can do a proper fourth on it. So all hobbyist stuff. And then finally, my uh, eldest son and I are building a robot and uh, I've been interested in uh, the robotic uh, use of Forth too. So anyway, that's, Hi, uh, that's where I'm at. If I could, could add one more Hi, thing. Uh, here is the uh, 
computer case with the CPU File version. It's intended to be an eight slot Euro card backplane with a lot of ports on the front. It just uh, coincidentally seems to resemble the National Instruments chassis. Um, it was on, sub, I was unconscious, but I did have one of these hanging around the whole time. Here is a National Instruments chassis, P compact PCI. Oh, those I just the wanted day. to show the model. <laughs> well, I, I worked at National Instruments for uh, three years, so that's one of my dumpster dives. All right, uh, Dimitri. Dimitri Panato. Yep, I'm here. Um, hello Pronounce there. your um, name for us. <laughs> yeah, my name is uh, Dimitri Penado. Uh, I'm from Southwest England. Uh, I currently work as a hardware verification engineer on uh, Risk Five. Um, I came across Fourth actually when trying to learn a bit about uh, compilers. Um, some authors recommended uh, compiling down to uh, reverse Polish notation, and I came across Fourth in that process. But I realized that Fourth was a language to write in rather than a language to, uh, just to compile to. I was really impressed with that. Um, so really, I'm learning Fourth to try to understand more about computers. I happen to be born at a time when I missed the 80s uh, home computers and all of that, but I'm too young to have been taught the, on the um, the Raspberry Pi and the BBC micro bit. Uh, so yeah, this is just about me trying to understand. Um, and part of that, I'd really like to um, experiment with a fourth chip or perhaps a fourth on FPGA. You All might right. want to look at, uh, at uh, uh, what's called a, a blue pill. Uh, oh, yeah. I, actually, I actually got that, yes. Um, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, you can, you can get quite a bit of uh, feel for it. There's both the Mer Mecrisp, which is out there. Uh, I have a version of e eForth up on the, uh, in the GitHub that you can put directly on it, but I'm not going through the USB. I'm just, uh, uh, just it's just a serial uh, connection, which isn't too hard to do anyway, because you can get a uh, USB to serial. And uh, I'm planning on on modifying it, though. It's uh, uh, in order in order to optimize the uh, RAM. I'm expecting to move uh, compiler operations, that kind of compiler stuff, move that off into uh, uh, to run out of the uh, uh, out of the flash only. Uh, as opposed to what we typically do, what uh, uh, Dr. Ting did is he moves everything into RAM and then operates out of RAM. So I intend to shove all that stuff out of the way so that uh, RAM is basically just more more useful and it's only 20K. So you, you want to make a, a better better use out of that space. So there's all these fun things. But the MeCrisp is, uh, is, a, is a very kitchen sink kind of uh, fourth it has just about everything in it. It's pretty good. And there's a lot of, lot of stuff in there that uh, I, I found useful for, for talking to things like uh, SD, uh, SD boards and stuff like that. Okay. That sounds uh, really interesting. Moving on, Dennis, Dennis Rufer. Hello, Dennis Rufer. Yep, I'm here. Um, I don't know where to, it, well, I can start where I started in fourth was back in Michigan um, doing uh, an expert system in car diagnostics um, with fourth. And um, that got me into engineering and been in engineering all the time. I have sort of given up on trying to be paid to do fourth anymore. I was paid for fourth for Oh, a good 30 years. Um, but I'm no longer paid to do fourth. I'm paid to do C. Um, I'm in Silicon Valley here in San Jose. Um, was the cameraman for the fourth interest for the SV fig for a while until I got sick and I'm still sick and will be sick forever. But have decided that I don't want to retire yet and am working again and um, doing pet trackers at the moment. 
That sounds so cool. Uh, let's try to keep it brief now. Uh, Don Golding. Don Golding uh, first bought LMI fourth, Ray Duncan's fourth in 1983. I was working, I designed a, a computer for real time ultrasound. My brother was coding and it took an hour to assemble in assembler language and I got bought fourth. I think I ran across it in Dr. Dobbs or Byte Magazine, one of the two. And anyway, um, lost the company about 86. I said, man, I really want to learn programming. And there was no schools and fourth. So I went and took Pascal and then data structures so that I could program in fourth. And then I created my first project in um, the somewhere around 89 time frame that would transfer images over the phone line and this is whiskers so this is my whiskers robot i sold a few thousand or two thousand of these guys into um education in the tech labs in um junior high and high school and um thousands tens of thousands of students were using fourth on my um on my uh, robot and learning um programming in like about 10 days. I want to do a quick screen share and I'll be done. <clears throat> uh, can you uh, do it after we're uh, down, down the list? I'd like to get through everybody. Sure. All right. That's fine. Greg Bailey. Hello, Greg. Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Excellent. I've been programming in fourth exclusively for a living since 1975 when a friend of mine went to work for Chuck. <clears throat> He brought me a 20 page listing of a system. And so I did an implementation for the LSI 11 of that model to prove that I understood it. And then I did an application in a Las Vegas hotel for an animated lighting system in a new theater to prove that to myself that it was a viable way to do things. Uh, that proof worked. And so that was the end of that. No more Fortran, just for the machine code. Uh, I began working with Chuck at Intellisys in 2006 and uh, I helped found Green Arrays in 2009, been there ever since. Uh, end of story. Greg Wiley or Willie? Hello. Hello, Greg. All right, Ilya Tarasov. Hello, everyone. I'm Ilya Tarasov uh, from Russia, Moscow. I'm a doctor of science in computer hardware and professor of uh, Moscow University. Uh, well, I use Ford for more than 25 years, uh, mostly is uh, my own four systems. Okay, did we do Joe O'Connor? Joe O'Connor. Right here. So uh, I became, my name's Joe O'Connor. I live in Connecticut right now. Uh, I became acquainted with Forth in the 1990s when I found Tom Zimmer's FPC. I joined the Forth Interest Group sometime after that. Uh, I primarily use Forth um, in my job as a um, DSL. I usually, uh, whatever, um, I have to use uh, like C sharp or Perl or Python. Um, I write a uh, um, fourth uh, scripting language on top of it, and then I program in fourth. So, um, cool. I'm, yeah, I'm also interested in learning hardware, although I don't have enough experience in that. Yeah. John Rybel. Hello, John Rybel. I'm trying to get it there, it's unmuted. Uh, I actually started in fourth uh, before I, I knew fourth. I modified the basic, uh, what, did, what did they call it? Tiny basic uh, that was put out so that it became extendable, tiny basic. You basically doing some token threading. And a few years later, after I saw some of the first things, uh, I was in Boston area at the time. I created a 
slurp, structured language using reverse Polish, uh, subroutine threaded forth on the 6800 that uh, Dave Bolton told me in one of the, his uh, hand response to my question to the fourth interest group. Uh, oh, it's subroutine threaded, that can't be fourth. But uh, by the early 80s, I was hooked up with Chuck and sort of followed Chuck through all of his businesses in the up until uh, Green Arrays kind of uh, arrived and I've been involved with Green Arrays since. And that kind of covers, oh, and I was also editor of a bunch of the fourth standards over and out. Kevin, you're muted. John's iPhone is is also John, uh, presumably. Yep, John Peter is here. <clears throat> um, I started out with Fourth a long time ago, just after the typing in of the source code. There was one funny system. It's called PNS Fourth. Sounds terrible, but it was Paint Noise Studios, and that was on a CPM K Pro. And I've been continuing. One of the fun stories is when people were, there was no way to easily look up source code. And I said, well, I, I just want to view the source code for this word. And they go, well, ma, 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 ma. And about, we were, we were having meetings every two weeks or something. And that was the, during the time of the floppies were eight inches in diameter. So eventually they came up with the word view. I'm really proud of that. I'm also proud that I was able to implement or have Dudley implement view on this online fourth. So it's it's very live and very useful. Um, the 2024, uh, there was a challenge to get a view on that system. It still hasn't happened. That's all I have to say. Jorge Janete, Janate, Janite. Uh, Janite. Oh, uh, are you hear me? I can hear you. Thank you for your patience with my uh, inability to pronounce your name. <laughs> it's normal. Uh, I'm a programmer, a Java programmer from, from Marília, São Paulo, Brazil. I'm just a beginner in Fort. So I started four, four years ago. I've never done some, something great. Like I only make simple things like blink LEDs and so on. I like retrocomputing, mainly 80, 80 bits architecture, Z80 and 6502. I, I really, really love them. And currently I'm learning 4583 to run in, in a MSX computer, um, a retrocomputer with a CPM compatible OS as a Rob. And I'm fascinated with 4 in Arduino, but I don't. Uh, I don't understand so much, so I, I'm just at the beginning, as I like it, as I said. Great. Uh, Jurgen? Hello, Jurgen. Okay, let's... Unmute, Jurgen. Okay, uh, let's assume uh, we'll get back to him. Uh, Ken B. Uh, I think there are two instances of Ken B. Hello, Ken. Ah. I'm back. Did we do you once already? Kevin, am I yes. unmuted now? You are unmuted. Did we do you once already? No. Okay, it's your turn. Jürgen Pintaska from Exeter in the UK. Uh, as, as we found out recently, I actually helped forth without knowing it. 40 years ago, I was applications engineer for the 1802 covering the UK. And that was probably helping MPE with any problems with the 1802 running forth. Then one customer at the time actually as a thank you gave me starting forth 
which went somewhere and got not touched for the for another 30 years until uh, I came back to MPE and uh, was there part time to help promoting MPE, which led to, well, as uh, Chuck knows and Ting knows, uh, to the books I uh, helped to generate to promote forth. And that's about it. My fourth knowledge is rather limited, basically trying to run the fourths that are in the books. And that's about it. If that works, that's enough for me. I'm not a software engineer. Thank you. Thank you, Jurgen. Uh, Ken B, Ken Bowett. Are that two instances of Ken? You did Ken, yeah. You did Ken and it was both the same. Okay, There's, I think he's on the list twice. Ling Nig? Ling? Hi, hi. Can you hear me? I can hear you. All right, uh, I'm Liang, I'm, I'm from Malaysia. I pick up fourth around three years ago and uh, basically I have tried to put this uh, Jones fourth into Firefox uh, browser to try to make it in, uh, in a browser as an interpreter, but uh, that sort of a uh, hang on uh, didn't get very far. But uh, I I try to make my own simplified fourth in uh, all sorts of high level language for web web applications and mobile mobile application in uh, JavaScript, Java, Python, PHP, and so on. And most recently, I make a simplified simplify kind of a fourth shell for bash, uh, sorry, a Linux bash shell. So I, I can now actually run sort of fourth command in a bash shell. So if anyone like to try that out, uh, let, let me know. All right, thank you. Okay, Stephen Adels. Uh, I'm, it wasn't clear to me uh, whether you just wanted to do your intro now or whether you uh, had a longer talk that you wanted to present. Uh, yeah, an intro. Go for it. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? <laughs> I'm sorry. We can hear you clearly. I'm sorry. Get your hand away from your face. You don't have to. Kevin, this is um, great. Okay. <clears throat> sorry, I think my mic wasn't working when you tried to talk to me earlier. <clears throat> we'll we'll get you in in a little while I'm a after. Language uh, researcher. Uh, uh, I started forth about 10 years ago. Um, I've tried to create forth in uh, C sharp twice and <laughs> still working on it. Um, I posted some text in the chat about an amazing uh, thing that I came across. Um, I'm just going to read it real quick because it's, so, it's pretty short. Uh, after Charles Moore moved forth to Green Array's platform, he remarked, that raises the question of what exactly is forth. Um, so I'm a language researcher trying to figure out and put into words why forth and some of the other cat native languages like cat and factor are so great. And I finally found a piece of the mystery of what the forth is. Um, stated here in this article titled uh, Why Concatenative or Concatenative Programming Matters by John Purdy. It states um, the following, which I paraphrase. Concatenative languages have a much simpler basis than applicative languages. So then, in fourth and other concatenative languages, function application becomes unnecessary. So it's what fourth leaves out a whole dimension of programming that we don't have to code when we code in fourth. 
So I've been impressed with fourth since the beginning that it can do the top to the bottom, the front end and the back end, you know, the operating system and the user interface, everything top to bottom. So that's one of the reasons why I keep coming back to it. Uh, the other thing that I've been researching, trying to figure out is the Lisp power of the, the macro power of Lisp. And uh, I've been trying to figure out, okay, does fourth have the same power? And I believe it does, but it actually does macros in a simpler way in the, like you don't even need them or, you know, it's, it just seems simpler. Anyway, um, I'm still learning fourth to a great extent. And uh, I think I've bought all of the books that, Mr. Jurgen Pintaski has uh, put up there, and I appreciate that. And I also appreciate Dr. Ting. I, I appreciate a lot of you guys anyway. Uh, all right, so I'm done now. Thank you. Okay, Greg? Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Oh, perfect. I think my mic wasn't working the first time around. We can hear my, you. My first event was, was an Apple II Plus. Back in, wow, a long time ago, 1978, uh, started writing assembly language code for a, a bulletin board that never went to work very well because the amount of work you had to do to do the development under assembler. And I came across a, a couple of floppy disks that had big fourth on it. And wow, what a difference to do the, to do the work in, in fig fourth compared to the assembler to get the same job done. Unfortunately, time went by, I stopped doing that, and I came across an interesting book, um, Polyforth, um, level two, and I started doing that on an, on an IBM PC, on an 8086. And I really enjoyed working with that, um, but my work at, at the time took me away from that type of the hobbyist work took me away from the work thing that I wanted to do. And then I learned about Chuck and his work. And I've been following his, his amazing accomplishments in, in the world. So it really is extraordinary to be present in his, and in all with everybody in this group here. Dr. Teng, uh, Mr. Pensky, Chuck Moore, thank you very much for, you, for doing what you've done. It makes the world a better place to be to start learning from top down when I've been learning from the back up just recently. Okay, Masa. Hello, Masa. Okay, Oscar Garcia. Hello. Do you Hello. hear me? I can Hi. hear you. Hi, Kevin. And thank you for hosting. Uh, my name is Oscar Garcia. Uh, I've been in computers and programming for 37 years now. Um, I know about Ford sin since the 80s. I've been I know about Chuck Moore and read it about him. Uh, I'm also nowadays I've very much been involved in uh, uh, internet technology and I have a company in medical record system and technology in medical records. And I'm also on the board of the internet working, uh, um, the interplanetary networking uh, group in the internet society. Uh, I'm, I've not been a programmer in Ford for uh, along those, all these years and I'm now starting to work in Ford with the uh, uh, development of Pablo Reda, who is also in this meeting, that is the, his R3 fourth development. So, well, that's my story. Okay, Thank Masa. You. Thank you. Thank you, Oscar. Uh, Masa. Hello, Masa. Okay, Pablo Reda. Pablo. Hi, I am Pablo Reda from Argentina. I start with uh, studying color for uh, 
and I make a derived uh, language called R3, and with this, uh, make a graphic algorithm and technology for video game. This is all. All right, thank you. Peter Milford, formerly a member of the executive committee. I think he was exiled uh, for uh, reasons that we don't understand. No, he quit. Hello, Peter. Okay, Sean Chen, robotics uh, right. wizard. Um, so I'm a self-taught programmer looking for the holy grail. Uh, for a few years, I bounced around in like, you know, object-oriented polymorphism languages like C, Java. And then uh, about three years ago, I came to my first SGFIG meeting and then I discovered that there's a lot more to programming than I thought there was. And uh, my first fourth was actually Swift fourth um, because I just searched, you know, a fourth programming environment like I would do for C or, or Python. And then Andreas leaned over and he said, um, well, usually make your own fourths here. So um, just really quick, if you don't mind me sharing my screen. Uh, I'm a, I do software and I'm the captain of a first tech challenge team. We do like robots really cool international competition. And uh, lately I've been trying to wrap my mind around fourth and I built this interpreter in Java and uh, I'm hoping to control a robot over Bluetooth. And so hopefully in May, we can take fourth to the world championships. Yeah. But, I, but I think fourth is it's really cool, a lot of history and I've just been doing a lot of research. All right, is that team uh, based at a particular high school or is it a uh, like a community organization or are you uh, uh, we're, more widely distributed? We're, uh, you can search us up, we're Future14473, we're a community team. And yeah, we're from, we're from all the local schools. Uh, we're based in Fremont, Fremont um, Bay Area. California, USA. Okay. Yes, yes. Is there any Masa to be had? All right. Be that way, Masa. He may have left. Uh, there's a Stephen A. Is that the same as Stephen Adele's? Okay. Stephen's nodding, so I'll uh, mark him off. Now there's Onot. Uh, Onot, are you there? Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Onot. I'm from Turkey. Can you hear me? Yes. Did you have a longer... Uh, a longer presentation that you wanted like 10 minutes or or did you just want to introduce yourself I, I i could do 10 minutes later i mean i got like a prefix dispatch like word prefix word dispatch based color for it in x64 assembly like five kilobytes that has like a bunch of cool features i think in like in a simple form so I guess 10 minutes would be enough <laughs> later. Okay. Well, by later, uh, there's no later. Uh, oh. Maybe in a okay. few minutes. Are you are you sure. ready to do it like in five minutes from now? Sure. Yeah, that sounds okay. great. Okay. Why don't you uh, okay. hang on the line? And I'm going to say, awesome. is there anybody that in my incompetence I didn't manage to get to? Uh, I'm sorry if I didn't call your name. Speak up. You missed Pat Caffrey. Okay, Pat, you're on. Introduce yourself. Where are you from? Say something I'm in Oakland, about California. Ford. I'm in Oakland, California. I've been using Fourth since 1979. Used Fourth on the on the Apple II. As somebody else here worked on, and I worked with Dudley Ackerman and uh, John Peters. Later joined the group. We're the last me two mem two members of the Apple Core of San Francisco uh, subgroup Fourth, and we've been meeting twice a week for since 1979. Um, I've done work for Apple Computer on, on, on uh, their floppy disk test drives. I've done work with some Novix. Uh, and uh, mostly I spent my, most of the time I was either managing teams or, or documenting a lot of the systems. I documented uh, uh, that uh, the, the first uh, IBM, the John Draper's uh, uh, word processor. Anyway, I've been doing it for a long time. And uh, most of now I'm retired and I don't do much with it. I've, got, I've just gotten a, uh, Raspberry Pi. I'm thinking I might try to uh, push something around with and get forth into it. But um, anyway, been around a long time. Uh, glad to be here with everybody. Okay. Still no Masa. <laughs> he may have left us. Stephen Peltz. 
Hi, Stephen. Hi, Hi, Kevin. Okay, I, my name's Stephen Peltz. I run a company called MPE. We make really high performance fourth systems that run on most operating systems and nearly all embedded microcontrollers. Big change in the last year is that we've switched to dual licensing so that we're now uh, free of charge for non-commercial use. So we're semi-open source now. And our big change at the moment, what we're doing is shifting everything over to 64 bits where it's appropriate. So I'm still keeping busy and the future of the company is assured for the next 20 or 30 years. That's it. I have this thing where the space bar is supposed to unmute and sometimes it doesn't work. What's the best way to get started with your products? Let's say I have a, a laptop running Windows 10 and I want to try it out. Download, download, download the installer from our website, install it and play. One of the things you'll be surprised is that all our fourths are fully documented because we, we, <laughs> Sorry, sorry to be shock, a shocker, but we're, we're great believers in literate programming and all the, all the manuals, the source code is in the source code. And we've been doing this for nearly 20 years. So it's, it's really, you can download for, for Mac, for Linux, for Windows, and for a Raspberry Pi. And you'll find all our desktop fourths generate native code. So there's their subroutine threaded with heavy optimization. Okay. Uh, let's can, see. Post your website to the chat. Go ahead. That was that's what I was going to ask. Thank you. Um, you go to mpefourth.com and work your way through. M-P-E-F-O-R-T-H dot com. And if you want to buy a commercial license, you go to vfxforth.com. So all, all our products are branded as VFXforth and you'll find a whole lo load of toys to download, install and play with. All right. Anyone else that I missed? Uh, Dave, Dave Henderson. Okay, Dave, you're up. Okay, well, I started, uh, I read Starting Forth and thought Chuck Moore had a good idea and uh, went to Toys R Us, bought a Hess Forth 64 at Toys R Us and started with Commodore 64. Built a selectric printer driver and hardware and all that. It was, it was really easy to do and annoyed everybody by printing term papers at night on a selectric, which is pretty loud. And then used it for some industrial control and now I'm just... Uh, Restoring fourth computers and other computers and and trying to write some stuff for Jupiter Ace. So uh, that's my story. Uh, really like messing around with fourth. I think it's really fun. All right, Dave Jaffe, you there? I think I skipped over Dave Jaffe. Oh, in my well, inability to read this list of people that is sort of in alphabetical order, but not quite. Yeah, you're on Dave. Oh, I'm Dave Jaffe. I'm in Mountain View. Um, I was taught uh, fourth by Kim Harris back in the early 80s. Uh, we actually taught fourth for about three years at Stanford. And I've used um, uh, fourth for um, assistive technology applications when I was at the VA Medical Center. And I also developed um, a tethered fourth called Jibre fourth for 8-bit systems. Um, um, in the in the 80s as well, and I'm the uh, fourth and SVFig uh, webmaster. And when we um, get through this pandemic and we're able to meet back at at Stanford, um, the host for the SVFig meetings. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Anybody else that I didn't call? Uh, Brian uh, Fox. Me. Go ahead, Brian. You're on. Thank you. Um, this is Brian Fox. I've been absent from the fourth community for about 20 years. Uh, I had a good excuse. I went over to the dark side um, and 
made some money on the business side of things. Um, but previous to that, I'd worked for a um, local broadcasting company um, in Canada here. I'm about a uh, one hour drive west of Port Huron, Michigan. Um, so I built an election system that was rather bizarre and used the fourth interpreter natively uh, to <laughs> um, take text from the newsroom computer system uh, and using a domain specific language, let the reporters update the the character generator computer. Uh, so I was interpreting text in real time. That was pretty fun. Um, I built a chicken counter using Forth on a 6811 that counted baby chicks, about 90,000 per hour, live baby chicks, <laughs> which is, uh, I believe, still in operation around the world. Uh, I passed it off to another group of developers and they upgraded it with a 6812 and that's the last I heard of it. Anyway, um, I am now back at it, uh, wrote a cross compiler because it's something I always wanted to do for the uh, 9900 CPU and uh, and that's how I spend my time. Uh, in fact, I'm trying to write a, a, a monitor for uh, a fourth monitor for Eric who's on the call here right at the moment. <laughs> and that's me. Okay. Anyone else whose name I did not call? Just me. Going once. Go Can ahead. Oh, I'm muted. You're, oh. uh, you're on, Richard. Oh, Rich Gilbertson. Um, I started in 1976 on a K43 teletype terminal <clears throat> and hand built the damn thing by doubling the memory to 128 bytes. <laughs> so laying upside down soldering. Anyway, that's where I got started. I've been- uh, Where are you from? Me? I'm in Vancouver, Portland. Well, next to Portland, Oregon. But Vancouver is where I'm at. <clears throat> Anyways, um, I started with uh, that. And I've gone to several different languages, uh, a lot of fourth. Basically, what I do with fourth is I rip off what, what it does. I find something it does and I rip it off. I work with a language called GPL. It's supposed to specialized for the TI. But other than that, that's pretty much what I do. And uh, I really like Forth, and uh, I work with a guy that uh, used Forth for a harvester and a cultivator. What it did was it ran the it ran the unit where it would just go between the weeds, you know, take out the weeds between the plants. And so I work with that. So I did some work with Forth, robots a little bit, not much, but anyways, that's me. There we go. Anyone else whose name I did not call, now is the time. Speak up. Onet, Onet, are you there? Hello, Onet. Hello. Yes, yes, I'm here. OK. 